What is happening, guys? It's Friday, and we are at the Hack and Pack Shop, and I'm going to put up a pretty good controversial video today, and it's going to be very educational at the same time. This is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about used car purchases as a dealer, used car sales as a dealer, and used car purchases as a consumer or somebody off the street going to a dealer and buying an automobile. Okay, I'm going to pr pretty much break the whole game down to you of how it works, what you should know, and even stuff that you maybe shouldn't know. So we're going to start. I have a vehicle behind me. It's, it's one that I had purchased at auction about a week, a little over a week ago. And it's a 2004 Chrysler Town & Country. Fully loaded. It's got every available option to these vehicles except for a drop-down DVD player. It's got leather, moonroof, power sliding doors. It's got remote rear opening hatch. Every option. Aluminum wheels, moonroof, you name it. This bastard's got it. And do you guys out there looking for vehicles? Maybe you're in the market for a van, truck, SUV, car, whatever. Watch this video. You're going to thank me later for it. Some dealer guys out there <laughs> might not like it. But again, they might because I'm going to expose the goods, the bads, the uglies, and the pretty. So here we go. I bought this vehicle at an auction, and I'm going to give you guys just rough figures. I'm not going to tell you exactly right down to the penny or dollar, but I'm going to tell you within a few hundred dollars of what a vehicle, what this vehicle was purchased for, what it should be sold for, the cost of the repairs, etc., etc., etc. And I don't know what the hell I did with my freaking marker, so I'm not going to be able to write any of this down. So you guys grab a pen, and uh, we're just going to we're going to rock and roll with this thing. So let's do a walk around. Okay, we're going to pretend you guys are, I got to unplug you here, I've had you plugged in for a while. We're going to pretend you're looking at this vehicle to purchase it. Again, 2004 Chrysler Town & Country, nice van, okay, it's got the fog lights, okay, 3.8 liter engine, which they're a good engine, it's clean, okay, got a brand new battery, another good thing, well, almost new, 7 to 12 is the date on it, all right. Silver, it's the right color. Power windows, locks. It's got your power vent windows, which these back windows here tilt open. Okay. Got leather interior. This is all stuff you guys look at when you buy a car. It's got a DVD player in it. Let's see if these... uh. got dual zone climate control it's fired up no lighting in here is kind of bad guys I apologize moon roof got your dual zone heat back here sitting in the driver's seat you can open the rear gate push on the button This is all stuff you as a consumer check out and ooh and ah over a vehicle. Oh, I gotta have that. It does this. It's freaking so cool. All right. Same thing with these doors. Push a button. Okay. This is all stuff you check out. This is what you show off to your friends. Like, you know, look at me now. I got all this. You know, power moonroof. I mean, this van's got it all, guys. Body on it looks good. You know, it's got a nice instrument cluster in it. Got nice wheels on it, even though they're aftermarket. You know, walking around the thing, it looks pretty good. All right. Again, we're playing you. You're looking to buy a vehicle. It's like, wow. It's not all banged up. You know? Check a tire out. Ooh, got good rubber you're going, good tires. No cracks in the windshield. You know, paint all matches. Oops, got a little dent in the bumper. That ain't no big deal though. This is what you're thinking.
And you go to the dealer? Hell yeah, I'll take it. And we plug it back in here. Hang on. That you just bought your car. You just bought the minivan of your dreams. Son of a bitch. All right, now what did I have as a dealer have to go through to sell you this vehicle? This is where the games begin. First of all, to become a dealer in New York State, you have to buy a bond. You have to buy a $50, well, $25 or $50,000 bond to sell a car. You need to have a commercial piece of property to sell your car on with an office, book work, a desk, okay, and a place to display your cars. You need to have what they call an MV50 book, which is a book that you buy to do all your sales transactions with. You have to pay for dealer plate insurance, which is about 2,000 bucks a year. You have to buy your dealer license. Okay, you have application fees. You have state guys that come by and check your stuff. Okay, you have to get your vehicles inspected. You have to go to the auction and buy the vehicles. And this is where it all comes down to you buying that vehicle, what it takes for a guy like me to get this vehicle to you. And then we're going to talk about a lemon and how you can get screwed and how you can make money. This particular vehicle was bought at an auction a little less than an hour away from here. This vehicle was purchased and we're just going to throw a rough number out there within a few hundred of what was paid for it. We're going to say this vehicle was $3,500 at the auction. And you just looked at this vehicle and you just decided to put your name on the dotted line for this vehicle for the sale price of $5,500. And accidentally, when, the, when you're signing the paperwork, somewhere's on that form, you see that the dealer only paid 3500 bucks for it, and you're thinking in the back of your mind, that son of a bitch just made $2,000 on me. Such an easy life. All right, $2,000, we're gonna break it all down to you. So say this vehicle was purchased for $3,500. We had to get the dealer license. We have to supply the place to to sell and to uh, display the cars, we have to get the cars inspected. We have to have body work, mechanical work, things like that done. This car for $3,500, okay, yeah. So we paid $3,500 for it. We also drove almost an hour to go look at this vehicle at the auction. We also walked around the auction for roughly two hours to find this vehicle or maybe even purchase this vehicle for you. Then we had another hour to drive home. But at that auction, when that vehicle sold for $3,500, we also had to pay $160 fee to buy the vehicle at the auction. Okay? This is an example. Every auction, the pricing's different. Some auctions, it's only a, a $50 or $80 buyer fee. Some auctions, it's two, three, four, five hundred dollars $500 buyer fee, depending on the price of the vehicle. Okay? Now the vehicle gets back to our car lot. We had to pay 40 bucks to get it delivered because maybe we didn't have anybody with us to um, deliver the vehicle or to, to drive it back. So we just paid another 40 bucks. All right, so that $3,500 right off the bat without any other hidden expense from what it took to start the dealership, now we're already into this vehicle for roughly $3,700. Not a big deal, right? Okay. This vehicle also had a couple dents in it. It had a dent in the... Uh, uh, driver side sliding door and it had a dent in the driver side recorder panel by the tail light. So there's a $400 repair at the body shop. So now we're into this vehicle for roughly $4,100 at the sale price that we're selling it to you for for $5,500. So we put the thing up on the lift and we decide to have our mechanic check it over and the mechanic says okay well it's going to need uh, rear brakes. They're not really metal to metal yet but it's going to need rear brakes soon. Probably should change the rotors, they look a little crusty, and uh, maybe it's going to need a fuel filter. Alright, so we just paid the mechanic roughly $200 to put rear brakes on the vehicle. Another $50 bucks for a new fuel filter, okay? And then while he's under there checking it out more, he sees uh, maybe it needs a couple stabilizer links too. It's got a little rattle, you know, when I drive it. You know, you could hear it, They're, you know, they won't fail inspection, but, you know, the consumer's going to hear it, you know, and, and, and you know, it's probably going to be like $150 to change them too. All right, another 150 bucks. Now we're into this vehicle for roughly $4,250. Not too bad, right? So now we have roughly $1,250 of a profit margin on this vehicle. 
Well, after all the work was done to it and things like that, you know, it kind of got dirty, you know, from the drive back and the mechanic might have gotten some greasy footprints in the interior. So we've got to have the car cleaned up and detailed. So roughly there's another $80 to $160 for a detail. So we'll just round it off as $100. Bucks. They have the car detailed, any, you know, spots in the seats or carpet taken out, you know, the vehicle waxed, polished, things like that. So now we're into the vehicle for roughly $4,350. So now we have a profit margin of roughly $1,150. So say me as a dealer owner or, or a rep for the dealer decide, well, I'm going to take the car home tonight. Going to drive the car home, you know, see how it is. Got new brakes on it, you know, it's all cleaned up, things like that. And then all of a sudden, that stupid, annoying check engine light pops on for an EVAP code. And EVAP codes, as a lot of you mechanics know, they can be a pain in the ass to chase. It could be something as simple as a gas cap, or it could be something as major, maybe a fuel tank, or maybe it, you know, it needs a, a, a purge valve or something like that. You know, EVAP leaks can cost hundreds of dollars to fix. But we'll say it's just something as simple. We'll say there's a pinhole in the filler neck. And the gas cap looks a little, eh, nasty, okay? So we put a brand new filler neck on it and put a gas cap on it. Now we have another $200 into this vehicle for a brand new gas cap and filler neck. So now we're talking roughly $925 to $950 profit margin on this vehicle. We've invested a ton of this money into the vehicle. And there you go. So we roughly made 950 bucks. We had to send the car to a body shop. We had to send the car to a mechanic shop. We had to go to the auction and buy the car. We had to take the time and the gas to go to the auction. And now because we had an EVAP leak, now we have to put 100 miles on the vehicle. Roughly 100 miles on a vehicle, country road driving, it's roughly two hours worth of time. Okay, and you're gonna burn roughly 20 to 25 dollars in fuel. So there's another 25 bucks and another couple hours. Figure you're paying yourself 20 bucks an hour. So we'll just, you know, roughly knock 50 bucks off that. All right. So really, there's a little bit less of a $900 profit margin on this vehicle. Now this particular vehicle, it has not gone through the mechanic shop yet. It has gone through the body shop, which is yours truly. Okay, and I'm also the owner of this vehicle. So the body work's been done. I'm getting ready to check it all over for the mechanical work, okay? This vehicle is not going to hit the car lot, and roughly is what I'm telling you is what it would have cost roughly for me to make it hit that car lot, okay? Would have made roughly 900 bucks on it, okay? This is the deal. I didn't get to the brakes yet. Basically, I started doing a mechanical check over of this vehicle. What could have been a potentially roughly, we'll say, $900 to $1,000 profit, now could be a $900 to $1,000 loss. And this is why. The vehicle is delivered. I run it up the road. I did do a little quick check over after I purchased the vehicle. Everything seemed great. Shipped it good, steered good. A little bit of front end noise, so I think it probably does need sway bar links. Not a big, big deal, though. There is no check engine light on. The rear brakes are getting down. All right, but this is all examples for you guys. But now we're getting into true 100% reality. So this vehicle, okay, roughly, um, there's roughly $4,200 invested into this car right now from me. I discovered that, the, that it had a little bit of an engine knock that was hidden. It might have been covered up by motor honey. Maybe it just wasn't quite warm enough when I looked at it. Um, whatever the case is, there's a, there is a little bit of an engine noise in this car. And unfortunately, now for me, I am stuck with the decision of what to do with this vehicle that I already have $4,200 invested in. And then, you know, a bunch of time, okay? So what do you do? Do you take the vehicle? Do you have the engine repaired at a cost of about $800? And basically, maybe break even if you're lucky. Maybe. And that's if you can get the full $5,500 out of the vehicle. Or do you send it back to the auction, maybe take a quick five to $800 loss and start with something else? Or do you sell to the consumer, them not knowing a thing? All right, now me personally, I already know the answer to my question that I'm asking you. This car is not going to be 
going to, it's not going to be sold to a consumer from me or the dealership that I am associated with. This car will be returning to an auction and the vehicle will be resold. Now this vehicle I had bought under green light and I'm going to explain the lights to you guys right now, okay? When you buy a vehicle from a dealer only car auction, there is three lights. There is a red light, there is a yellow light, and there is a green light. The red light is the vehicle is either over 100,000 miles or there's a major mechanical malfunction or you're buying that vehicle as is. So you bought it, you own it, no matter what the hell happens before you even pay for it. You had that bid badge on your, on your coat, you bid on that car, you won that auction, you were legally binded to that contract, you were legally binded to that car. There is absolutely no way out of it. You have to pay for it. This is on a red light car. Okay? And a yellow light. You're legally binded to it. No matter what, if the vehicle is $500 or $10,000, you own it. You're stuck with that son of a bitch. You bought it red light. You bought it as is. Too bad. So sad. It's yours. Or yeehaw! I got a great deal because it was a red light car. It could happen in many different ways. Or a yellow light car. If a car runs on a yellow light, that means that there is announcements to be made on that vehicle. That car rolls up to the auction podium desk and you get ready to bid on it, that auctioneer or the, the selling dealer has an announcement to make on the car. Usually the auctioneer announces it, they say this car is running yellow light because it might have um, uh, past flood damage, it might have past salvage history, it might be a great car but it needs, you know, there's no brakes on it. That's a yellow light car. Now this particular vehicle, I purchased green light, which green light means rides and drives, it'll get you home. Roughly, it's, it, it, could, it could need up to $700 worth of mechanical repairs to be a dependable, inspectable, retailable vehicle. Okay? And that's, that's $700 for one item. So basically, it could need a fuel tank and fuel pump that's a total of $600. It could need $400 worth of suspension work. It could need $200 worth of brake work. But not one of those particular systems of the vehicle requires more than $700 of repairs. Even though the vehicle might need $1,400 in total repairs, but not in any one particular system. So pretty much you're saying the engine's good, transmission's good, that some bitch is getting you home. Period on it. That's pretty much a guarantee. So I buy that car, which I did with this vehicle, under green light. Green light means rides, drives, you have up to one hour to arbitrate it. Arbitration means that you have an hour to check this car over and if you see a, a major mechanical deficiency in that vehicle that's over $700 in repair to fix for one system of the vehicle, so say it's got a bad transmission. You drive it and think slipping. That's an arbitratable cause. That means that you can go up to the auction, you talk to the arbitration mechanic, and you say, look, I just bought this car green light. It was $3,500. The tranny's slipping. I don't want to take the car. So it's what they do is they investigate that problem, and sometimes it might take days to, to actually get them you know, to really thoroughly check it over, depending on how busy they are. So, but legally you bought the car under green light, so you are under a binding contract. But, you found a deficiency with this car, so now you can arbitrate it, and you can fight having to pay and take the vehicle into your possession. This vehicle was sold green light, drove it around the parking lot, okay? Everything seemed great. A little bit of a suspension noise, like I said, nothing major at all, okay? I mean, nothing major. Sway bar length's probably 100 bucks. Okay, done deal. So the vehicle stayed at the auction, and it was delivered to me two days ago. So that would be Wednesday. Today is Friday. So the vehicle now is out of arbitration. That hour has come and gone. You have an hour worth worth of, you know, time to bitch and arbitrate the vehicle. But that hour's long gone. Here we are, you know, now uh, eight days later. Okay, the vehicle was brought to me six days later. I own it. 
It's already been paid for. I already wrote a check to the auction. I own the car. Now after me thoroughly inspecting the vehicle, it has an engine knock. Minor. I mean, very. this car might run another five years. It might only run another five miles. It's hard to say. So now as a dealer, what do I do with this car? Again, this is stuff that you guys don't know what goes on behind the scenes. All right, do you put a motor in it? Do you put motor honey in it and sell it to a, to a person? Do you put motor honey in it and run it back through the dealer? Do you change the oil and hope maybe that engine knock is gonna go away? Maybe it needs an oil pump? It could be a many, many, many different factors. This vehicle, now with me, a lot of the vehicles that I have sold or do sell go to people that I know because they trust me. They trust my opinion, they trust my work, they trust me as a person. So in the back of my mind, I have a single mom with say two, three, four kids, you know, that lives off minimal income, say a thousand a month. She's gotta pay all her bills off a grand a month or whatever, two grand a month, whatever, it doesn't matter. She gives a thousand dollars down to a finance company or she just got her tax money back and she writes me a check for $5,500 for this car. What happens to the car in six months when the motor might blow up or it starts knocking? Then I am the jerk that sold her the car. I am the guy that she trusted with her money to get her this car. And now I turn into the jerk. This is where it gets tricky as a dealer or as just a normal person to person sales guy. Even on Craigslist it happens, you know what I mean? So what do I do? I want you guys to tell me what I should do with this car. I could have made $900 off of this car. No problem. But then I would have to stand behind it. We stand behind our cars for 90 days and 3,000 miles. New York State Lemon Law is 30 days and 1,000 miles. So I have to stand behind this car. Anything happens to this car besides brakes, tires, maintenance, I am responsible for this car. Okay? for the next 90 days. Anything can happen in 90 days to a car. But I already know in the back of my mind this has got an engine noise. So then, say I sell it to somebody I'm suspecting I didn't know, I gotta keep in the back of my mind, God, this, you know, the freaking motors, it might blow up, oh my God, what am I gonna do? You know, no. That is why people trust me, is because I don't do that to people. Back in the day, I used to be a shady character, I'm not gonna lie to you. But I'm 38 years old now, I've grown up, been through hell and back, okay, with personal and business life, and now things are starting to take a good uphill turn. And I want to keep it that way. I want to keep the reputation good and keep the reputation going and earn people's trust. This vehicle is not going to be sold retail to anybody through me. This vehicle will be gone back up. It will be sent to auction. It will be red light, and it will be up to whoever buys it to thoroughly inspect it themselves. I'm not announcing an engine noise. This vehicle is sold to me green light. Green light, pretty much with a guarantee, the thing is 100%. Vehicle's going to be sold red light at auction. And that's that. So whoever buys the car is going to own the car, dealer-wise. And they're going to have to thoroughly check the car over themselves before they bid on the vehicle at the auction. Okay, I'm an experienced guy with cars. All right, I mean, I, I do fish a lot of my mechanical work out. I have good friends that are good mechanics. I do body work for a living. Yeah, I went to school for mechanics. I'm actually a decent mechanic. I just don't like doing it. So I sublet all of my mechanical work out, okay? But me as a, as a car guy, I mean, I started wheeling and dealing in cars since I was 13 years old. I am 38 years old. So I've been wheeling and dealing in cars for 25 years. I started painting cars when I was 13 years old. I've been painting cars for 25 years. I have learned a lot from the first time I ever picked up a sander or a paint gun. And it's all with experience. I don't care how much schooling you go to. It's all an experience, okay? So there, this is why I'm making this video, because I am sharing my experience, my vehicle experience, my knowledge to you guys, to the public, to the consumer. Okay, anybody can easily get taken at a car lot, on Craigslist, it doesn't matter. Is what you got to do is you got to understand people to get your good deal. 
There's been so many times I have found a car, we'll say, on Craigslist. And I'm like, yeah, freaking 2002 Lincoln LS, they only want 1500 bucks for it. That car books for 3500 I am on my way, on the phone. Yo, cash in my pocket, I'm there. 45 minutes later, an hour later, I freaking show up, have to find a ride up there, okay, to go get the car, you know, so I can drive it home. You know, and walk around it, and you know, the guy's out there, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's like trying to block shit, like, yeah, it's got just a little teeny scratch on a little teeny bit of rust, you know, on the freaking side of the car's cave neck. You know, oh, it, it might need a tire, and all four tires are bald. You know, oh, it's just got a little rip in the seat, and the freaking seat's all tore to shit. You know, and a rug stain, and it looks like somebody pissed all over themselves in there. All right, this is reality, okay? This is reality. When I list a car for sale, I list its faults because people sometimes drive minutes hours and somebody's here oh it's Adam um, to come look at a car and I'm not one to waste people's time okay so is what I'm saying is buyers beware you can make money you can lose money is a dealer it works both ways too so you guys be educated be knowledgeable Look underneath the car, walk around the car, don't let the bling sell you. Don't let the bling sell you. Listen to that motor. See if it smokes, see if it burns oil, see if the transmission slips. Feel the brakes, check out the tires, listen to the exhaust. Look at that stuff before you look at all the leather and the moonroof and the nice stereo and all the accessories. Because the bling isn't getting you back and forth to work. Bling isn't getting your kids from daycare. Bling just gets you looked at cares about getting looked at you need to get there you need to get your ass there and you need to get your ass home safely and your children and your loved ones and your friends and your pets okay so hopefully you guys learned a little bit of something again you know one out of eight most dealers lose on a used car this is my one so with all that being said you all have a goody goody thank you for watching hope this was educational for you and if you guys had, had, yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know, and um, you know, leave your comments. Give me your opinions of what you think, and let me know if this video helped you. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Later.